Yang. I feel like Yang, it, whilst there are areas wrong with INTZ's uh, game so far, yeah. Yang's laning phase, not one of those areas. So Pride needs to be able to go with yeah. that base of a top laner. The flash over the wall in that Chiefs game, bait, the Lissandra ulting herself, this is the highlight moment there. Yeah for Yang. You can see how this guy has this outplay potential. Already into picks and bans, though. We have the Karma, the Rise, and the Azir taken off the table by INTZ, whereas the Echo, Alistair, and Kindred, one jungle ban, not two, coming out from Isaris Gaming as the Mount Kai so far. And you kind of understand that, because if there are three strong ones, get rid of the one you don't want to play against, leave the other two up so you can take one for yourself. Yeah, it's a good place to be. It can shift the pace of pick and ban. You see INTZ potentially aware that there are two strong junglers left available, utilizing that to their advantage to snag the Maokai first, knowing that they have the luxury of waiting on that jungle pick. And it's kind of because Echo is seen as like, there's this triangle, right? So Poppy kind of does okay against Echo because you can get him out of the team fight. Echo does fantastically against Maokai because the split push potential becomes a little bit too much. And then Ma Maokai is like, okay against the other ones like <laughs> i'm gonna say it doesn't win the lane but becomes this, this super is this tank. not looking like a triangle i'll be i'll be honest all right you. it's a weighted triangle <laughs> like echo beats lots of things that's why yeah, he's banned but, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah so maokai is able to go up against the poppy and i think that's why they got the confidence to be able to pick it up of course the other jungler or the other top laner that has become incredibly popular in recent weeks is going to be that gragas will be picked up for pride so a pretty strong pick for him overall very much a playmaking top laner in addition to that aggressive jungle that we expected in the form of Graves this time around. Yeah, so Kletos picks up Graves for himself. Uh, this is interesting because whenever teams do this in this order, I expect them to swap it and just mind game the heck out of me. So I never talk about like which order it's in because it could be Graves top. I mean, it has seen a little bit of uh, play internationally. I, we haven't seen Graves top in so long. Who pulled it out like what, a week ago? Yeah, but... I, let, let's not talk about how disappointing yeah. Huni's been recently. Okay, yeah, no, I won't go that <laughs> far, but, you know, uh, it has seen a little bit of play, and I think that, again, something like a Maokai does have some bully potential, although we've seen that Maokai deals with, wow, that was quick. Uh, so <laughs> double AD compositions quite nicely. Yeah, and, uh, you know, obviously set themselves up for that with the Graves with whatever standard AD carry they want to pick, but... That quick rotation that you're talking about is huge in terms of meta power level. We have the Sivir, most likely for AD carry. <laughs> Guaranteed for AD carry. Yeah, Sorry, no, that, one I, that one I'll give you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. uh, of course, uh, Lissandra as well for talkers. So two pretty important champions. And this team composition right here, I think, is one of the strongest overall. I'm going to start calling this a super massive effect. Because yeah. super massive did this against the Chiefs. And now the Chiefs have done this against IT, ITZ. So ITZ is just like, you know what? We're going to use a super massive effect, double teleport, flanking play, get the Sivir in there. You know, we're just going to be able to clean up these AoE team fights. Because, like, Sivir and Callista in team fights at least feel very similar. They both have utility in their ultimate and then AoE damage in their basic auto attacks because of Ricochet as well as the Runan's Hurricane that comes out of Callista. And it just looks like get everyone in. The Kitchen Sink comp one more time. Just throw <laughs> everyone into the mix and you win the team fight as it does settles. Yeah, the murder train overall just running, especially with the Maokai as well. You yeah. have such a reliable tanky frontliner with one more source of that point and click engage, similar to Lissandra's Frozen Tomb. So very easy to get onto targets to lock them down, especially in the case of picks like Ezreal, which has been locked in for the AD carry. LeBlanc here in the mid lane, interesting choice. And so far, opting to take cleanse. This is not a matchup I'm too familiar of. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so this one's kind of weird because back and forth, LeBlanc doesn't like to take cleanse because she wants to kill Summoner in that lane, something like the Ignite. Uh, so seeing EMP go for that will be, uh, I guess, interesting. I think that uh, Lissandra will be able to just shove out the lane and disappear into Fog of War. I'm a big fan of talking about it, but sometimes the inherent pressure that you put on the map as Lissandra, you don't even necessarily have to roam. You just have to not be visible. And then the laners in the side lanes have to act as if you could be there at any moment goes across terrain terrifically well, and LeBlanc will struggle to follow her into Fog of War, especially if that's a Lee Sin or a Nidalee, because with the lockdown CC, LeBlanc just can't deal with both of them. Can probably escape one or the other, but at the same time, that's going to be very difficult. Yeah, a little too much. Too many forms of CC coming out from that Lissandra as well, and of course it is going to be the Nidalee locked in for Volta. This is one of those big playmaking picks that we talked about for him. If he can dictate the pace in the early game, if he can dominate the jungle, we've seen how quickly he can run away with a game. The Braum picked up as well, so overall, this is everything that INTZ want from a team composition. You've got a lot of power, got a lot of team play, got Revolta on an aggressive early game jungler, and it's looking pretty good for them so far. Yeah, I completely agree, and one thing I love to talk about is Braum is that he's such a solid uh, support champion when you have initiation already, because think about it. As soon as Yang flies in there on the Maokai, he's just able to stand behind him and get the big ultimate across everyone. It's much easier to execute some flash ultimates on Braum. So it just makes Jockster's life a little bit easier now playing this secondary engage as, far, uh, as opposed to the primary engage on Braum. 
And this is going to be one of those games where INTZ just pile in, expecting a bruise in Italy build something like a Rod of Ages into a Rhylize Crystal Scepter, a lot of health so we can go into Cougar form a little bit more and just try and kill everyone inside. Definitely going to be an option. Of course, the final lock-in for Isris Gaming is going to be that Trundle support, most likely picked to take care of that Maokai, really limit his effectiveness as a tank. But it's uh, still going to be a lot of pressure on this Trundle, I feel like, to try to disengage this Sivir comp. When they start running at you, you have to back away. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think Pillar's really a crucial spell now in this composition. I think that Ezreal Trundle is also quite a cool kite back lane. They deal with aggression quite well. Um, Trundle's just like the ultimate defusal, right? As soon as Stand Behind Me comes in, any aggression, he's just like, no, big pillar in the way. Like, mm. everyone's able to get back a little bit. Um, one thing I will say is that Yang needs to build second item QSS. We've seen out of these Maokais that if you do not build the QSS, as soon as you get Trundle ultimated, you get blown up. And so much of this team comp re relies on Yang to get the flank and be able to hold the team fight where it is long enough for the Lissandra, the Braum to swoop in with follow-up CC. So if he gets Trundle ulted really early and destroyed by all the damage that's going to come out of LeBlanc that's going to be able to come out of the Graves, that's really horrible news. So I'm expecting Sunfire Cave into the QSS, not into a Spectre's Cow, to make sure that he can shrug off that subjugate. And it's going to be interesting to see exactly what he does here, because not only does it make him very weak, but it makes the support trundle, despite essentially having no items, no stats, suddenly a huge threat. Suddenly the equivalent of a top lane tank yeah. in your support position. Yeah, subjugate and grass and the undying mean that, like, I've seen some trundles do some <laughs> crazy stuff, especially, like, we cast the LPL as well, like, uh, Zero's trundle, like, great example. He mm -hmm. will go frozen hard on his trundle, and then he will just run into backlands and start fighting people as if he's a top laner. So I completely agree with you if you don't deal with the subjugate. This is why, actually, we have seen trundle kind of fall out of fa flavor, because, like, somewhere in LCK, or you're probably, like, the two smart regions, as I like to call them. <laughs> Someone found out that QSS on uh, Maokai isn't a horrible item and gets rid of that really pestering ultimate. Mm -hmm. And Trundle players any man everywhere were a little bit disappointed in that finding Sifa. Yeah, of course. We are now getting into game. We'll have to see if it's going to come out. Maybe he'll build it into a Mercurial Scimitar. We saw that yeah. in LCK as well. But INTZ are going to be taking it up on the blue side versus ISG, Isaris Gaming, on the red. Already looking like a pretty standard safe start from both sides. Well, of course, you know, Maokai one of the highest base ADs in the game, so getting something like a Merc Sooner in there, <laughs> horrible. But, you know, if you got, you got six items. To be fair, this game was, I think, 50 minutes deep, yeah. and you're at the point where when you're getting, you got to get maximum value. That movement speed can't be I underestimated. I was actually going to say that, that. That's actually quite big, because if you do get, like, CC'd up, that burst of movement speed would be surprising, to say the least. I... <laughs> catch people off guard. Yeah. Quick Maokai into the back line, never quite what you want to see. What is the... Oh, God. I'm trying to remember the item. Righteous Glory. Yeah. It's the new Righteous Glory. Mercurial Scimitar, six item, Maokai. Everything you could possibly want. Of course, not a whole lot coming out. It looks like we will have standard lanes after the relatively passive start. Trundle, Ezreal, maybe starting the Gromp here. But overall, we've been seeing a few less lane swaps today overall. Yesterday, I felt like it was all about the lane swap. Today, a little bit more standard. Teams a little bit less eager to swap back and forth. Yeah, I just don't think they're getting what they want out of opening up the map. And there's this very specific reason to uh, lane swap. It's to accelerate the pace of the game, to open up the map, look for those flank plays. And what I'm seeing right now is a lot of teams are taking double teleport. So that makes you hesitant as... Uh, Isaris gaming to lane swap because that means double teleport becomes much more effective. As oh, wow, a little bit of trading here. Concussive blows at two stacks, looking to get to three. Will lock him down, but that's a quick trade of flashes. Neither team going down quite yet. It's just a little bloodbath here in the bottom lane. Jockster could be in trouble, trying to proc some stacks off that item to get a little bit of health back. But at the end of the day, oh god dang! I'm sorry, I missed that completely. <laughs> I was so caught up in him trying to get a stack, but that's gonna be first blood over to the Ezreal. That was an insane. Little fight there on the back of that Ezreal level 2. So what they did really sneakily is gave all of the experience over to Ezreal from the Gromp. And he hit level 2 straight away off on creep and was able to fly into that lane and completely dominate IOTZ. And uh, that's really interesting because we're already saying that INTZ must feel like their back is against a wall in this game. Well, you know what? You don't feel much better after that one. No, not at all. And this is the interesting thing. Ezreal normally considered such a weak laner, considered to lose out lane, just farm up, kind of take his time. But this is the second time today we've seen an incredible 
incredibly aggressive early game Ezreal, taking full advantage of that low Mystic Shot cooldown at level 1. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And, you know, uh, <laughs> even more aggressive in the top lane, Pride <laughs> once again, showing that maybe it's just Gragas. You know, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe Gragas is just a far superior laner to all these tanks because, once again, a Gragas is just winning out a lane. Oh, Revolta starting to get aggressive here, going in on the Kletos. Taking a decent amount of damage as Smokescreen comes out, but a complete miss on the end of the line. Means Kletos is just gonna have to back off that one. Yeah, so if Kletos actually hit that end of the line, that would have been huge trouble for Revolta once again. This uh, CBLOL team just seems confused, honestly. Maybe. They're expecting the rotation out of the mid laner, but Tokers isn't going anywhere. No, Tokers trading back and forth very aggressively with EMP, as we saw in that mid lane, but not getting too much out of it and having to back off as both the support and the jungler are ready to contest that ward placement with their own pink. I I and TZ seem already on the back foot. We're only four minutes into the game. Yeah, defensive summoner spell burnt there in the mid lane for Tokus to go back and get himself a second ring. He feels like he needs to be able to dominate this. Another teleport utilized in the top lane as Yang was losing out on his lane a little bit as well. So he burns the summoner spell. And you know what? I'm not going to say that's dangerous because we see it a lot actually worldwide, you know, using your uh, teleport to get an advantage. But this opens up bottom lane for Pride. If he hits level six, you know, goes back and he's able to get a deep teleport into bottom lane. This tier Ezreal, if he gets any further ahead, he just will skip the power trough of Ezreal completely. Yeah, sitting around in the fountain there for a couple seconds, maybe looking for the TP on the bottom lane. Does have the option to TP back to lane, although I don't think he needs to quite yet. He actually will, so big creep wave stacked up. Yeah, going to have to catch that one. Doesn't want to lose out on any gold or experience. So no TP advantage gained there. And in fact, Yang will actually have his TP up sooner. So a small potential window for INTZ here, although Revolta looking to make it a little bit sooner as he sets his sight on this bottom lane. Yeah, so trying to get down into the bottom lane, you see clearing out the waves nicely is Mikhail, but it is a big stack that they don't want to allow to be frozen. But that's what I was talking about. Any potential aggression nullified by Trundle. Yeah, instantly, and you can see them starting to back off. They spotted that pink ward that they placed and fought for earlier is spotting out Talkers as he tries to roam to the bottom lane. Oh. Small trade on here, back and forth, starting to get aggressive. Not at all scared of this LeBlanc. No mana. Winning out on the trade. Yeah, had that additional shop in, so had some more potions built up as well as an extra ring. Means it bullies out LeBlanc. Uh, this is one of those times where as a jungler, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. Like, you, Don't worry, you go back and shop. I got you. <laughs> don't worry, I'll take I'll take this you know, yeah. 300 gold here that you just left for me. And as a Graves, I mean, it's, uh, the thing is, is that if this was not a LeBlanc mid lane, yeah. I would say that this was fine. Graves, very, you know, farm heavy jungler, usually does pretty well. So we get some aggression here on the bottom side. Not going to follow through. But Graves getting the farm isn't the end of the world. No, it's definitely not. In fact, we see a lot of side lane uh, picked up by Graves, especially when he's close to items. And, you know, he's going for red smite, so he's looking to be aggressive at the start of this game. Actually mirrored by Revolta. Zyker has done a great job on this Ezreal, by the way. You saw the aggression coming in from uh, Jockster, and he was able to immediately arcane shift out of that and just completely nullify. So what should be a pushing big advantage lane for INTZ right now just isn't the case. And this Trundle Ezreal is going to only get better as the game goes on. Like a fine wine, better with age. <laughs> Continuing to scale up, of course, stacking up that tier and not suffering in the early game as much as Ezreal normally does for building an item that does not offer any combat stats. So that first blood plus, I mean, the excellent execution of this lane phase has nullified uh, what would normally be a disadvantage for him. One more time, though. We take the camera off top lane for a little bit. Yang had to burn the teleport e early, was getting pushed in. Take the camera off him somehow. Some voodoo magic up there. 20 CS in the lead. Like, I have dominant. And look, I mean, double Dorans on the Maokai, such a huge thing, or can be such a huge thing for him. But does it really justify a 20 CS lead? Because this is insane. Suddenly Yang is completely on the back foot here. And full health for Yang. Pride taking damage, burning through mana just to keep up. And... Top lane going very much in the favor of INTZ. I have no idea how he does it. And it just creates this, a huge zone in the top lane where they're cheating now into the jungle. Oh, Spear's going to land. Kletos. He's in trouble. Could be in trouble. There's the challenging smite going in, looking for blood on this one. Smokescreen going to come out and they oh, save his life and hit it again. Revolta, hungry for the kill. I don't know if we're going to get a camera. Revolta is going to pick up the kill onto Graves. And now they're hunting for Gragas. Talkers with the frozen tomb to bring it in. Yang to continue the lockdown and two quick kills given over to INTZ. Excellent play coming in from the team. Yeah, and all of a sudden, the LeBlanc might be in some trouble as well. EMP sticking around, but not going to go for any aggression. 
And I completely agree with you there. Like, what the heck was that? Like, a really aggressive play, but then Greg is kind of collapsing to the wrong part of the map. Like, should have gone back to his turret, even maybe tried to just back away at that stage. Not respecting the Lissandra room, potentially. A newbie and Zekro here in the bottom lane, very eager to make a difference as they have been doing very well in their lane, but they cannot push out the uh, the Sivir right now. At the end of the day, Ricochet is just too much for them. Yeah, and I... Oh, oh EMP may have overstayed his welcome. Nope, no Frozen Tomb available for Talkers right yet. Cleanse still available for EMP as well. So not a whole lot of kill pressure, although they will force EMP under his own But one of those uh, ambulance gangs that I like to talk about, you know, the Nidalee Run comes in. in heal. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a lot of damage onto the Ezreal. Yeah, it just runs in, heals, and is like, don't worry, you won the trade because of me. I'm going back <laughs> to my jungle now. Of course, the big advantage is Nidalee. Only an Amplifying Tome so far, but levels alone will give her a pretty decent heal. This Revolta will take yet another buff. Kleidos not getting a single one in this round jungle. And I think it's fair to say this is what we expected out of Revolta. There's Kledos and EMP now looking for the play here. Oh, Talker's trying to get out. Going to use the claw. Make it to safety. Smokescreen not effective there. And you know, it's just the trouble of ganking Alessandra. She has the freedom to escape, and LeBlanc, no immediate hard CC to lock her down. Yeah, completely agree, and they also force him off the dragon. So, you know, that's a good news story right now for Isaris Gaming. Probably the first of the game, as now they're trying to hunt Revolta a little bit. Cat might be on the menu, but maybe no. misjudging how quickly he farms. <laughs> Just clearing out this jungle in an instant. Hoping to get some buffs back for themselves, but they're not going to find it. Super aggressive on a Revolta here, but not landing the chain means the gank is going to fail, or the pressure is going to fail as Revolta walks away cleanly. Honestly, if that chain landed because he didn't have flash collateral damage, probably would have come over the wall and cleaned up the back end of that team fight. So, missed opportunity there for Isaris, definitely through some miss uh, execution from EMP, I think it's fair to say. Overall, not where they want to be whatsoever. As Talker is going to pick up this blue buff. You can see Trundle and Graves roaming in the jungle, but they've been spotted out by the warden. I don't know if they've cleared it yet, so a lot of this time spent waiting in a bush, hoping to find a pick off, is going to be wasted as the wave. Not to mention, kind of a weird place to look for a pick, as more aggression in this bottom lane. Uh, just because you saw him clear out red buff and then his raptors, then kind of hung around at yeah, the red why, buff. Why, like, why would he go check the red buff? Is, I just, yeah. Confusing uh, is a word I would use, but you know, it happens to the best of us. Yang once again just smacking him. Yeah, does have the haunted guys of now almost 30 CS lead, more than 30 CS lead, starting to look to push to 40. In addition to picking up that kill, it's just now completely dominating the lane. But Zekro gonna get knocked down and then knocked up, gonna get dropped out by Macau as a great team fight goes in his favor. Failed flash over the wall means he's gonna get stunned by the concussive blows as well. And Revolta's here on the backside just to make sure it's gonna go over smoothly. But one more kill. Assassinito Double. I'm going to say that wrong every time. But the double kill going over to Macau in an excellent fight. Yeah, double teleport utilized out of INTZ right now just to get themselves even more pressure around the map. You know, they leave Yang to deal with this teleport and all the pesky creeps and send the Sivir into the top lane. Now, after that first blood went down, just because of the double teleport pressure and the fact that Pride did not answer, they're able to blow open this map, honestly. 2,000 gold lead. They pick up first dragon, and things starting to really go the CBLO squad side. Yeah, definitely very much in their favor. Greg is desperately trying to recoup the CS differential here and put a little pressure on the top side, but Yang grabbing the bottom lane turret. The duo lane already headed to the top, and it feels like INTZ are just one step ahead. You know that high base AD, man? Just chipping away <laughs> at turrets. <laughs> We're there. I don't know what to We're, tell you. We're five items away from Mercurial Scimitar, <laughs> but there's the frozen tomb on Talkers alt himself to keep himself safe in that situation. EMP trying to get aggressive here, but is going to get locked up. Revolta does so much damage. They have to be careful. Newbie going to get picked up, and another fast kill for this jungler. INTZ dominating the map. And a huge miscommunication is now Pride going to get dove as well. Oh, first stack of Kassa blows. Looking for two, three. The spell shield coming out. Not even going to need it. Pride getting burned down and knocked out there. Six to one, the scoreline. <laughs> INTZ Everything is at their disposal. They are dominating the map right now, and honestly, this is a one-sided affair. Isra started so well, you know, we thought they had some aggressive lanes in the Nidalee, in the, what was turning into, like, Zykro and Yubi doing a fantastic job. Yeah, excellent. All, all in at that level 2 power spike, utilizing it so well, but now just falling behind 4k gold advantage for INTZ at 12 minutes. This is absolutely massive, and EMP overstaying his welcome. There's no mana left on that LeBlanc. Gray's going to try to back it up, and they will get the flash from Talkers. End of the day, though, not a whole lot as the Rift Herald will go down in favor of INTZ. Yeah, and it's about, like, what you're getting at what cost because meanwhile top lane turret was shoved into the tier two denying even more cs you can see 40 cs in the top lane is the advantage 10 is three kills in the 80 carry position and jungler just dominating up in cs up in kills and assists as well so 
across the board. This is probably what more of what we expected out of INTZ. Now it's how they translate it throughout the rest of the map and continue to win. And that was the big question yesterday. They had the lead in the early game, but they threw it with a greedy Baron attempt. They threw it with, you know, getting caught out by the Bard ult left and right. And there's no Bard this time around, but there is the Trundle, there is that Pillar, LeBlanc, Graves, these high damage pick potential champions. So, Mantis, you still have to play careful. But right now, things are very much in their favor. They were not 6k gold ahead yesterday either. So a little bit more leeway to make mistakes and a lot more opportunity just to continue to snowball this game. Yeah, definitely not 38 minutes into the game anyway. <laughs> As well, Isaris backs against the wall. You can see that they are trying to reclaim some control of their jungle with good defensive wards. But Pride now being collapsed upon. Yeah, Pride really struggling. Started off really well in the top lane, and then we look away for two seconds, as you said. The magic of Yang happens and suddenly he's, you know, 30 CS behind, slowly starting to catch up, but Yang still so much farther ahead. Hasn't even backed yet to buy any new items, but surely will have a few new ones under his belt when he finally gets the opportunity. Yeah, only really Tokas and Macau have gone back, you feel everyone else, like especially Nidalee, must be sitting on a boatload of gold right now because Revolta has just set up camp in the Itheris gaming jungle. Yep. Continuing to poke out, looking to pressure this blue buff as Macau and Jockster are gonna pressure the inner tower. He'll be getting cheeky with the pillars, but not going to be too effective. Just hoping that it'll scare them off. They don't want to get caught in there. <laughs> Little miscommunication, unbreakable and spell shield. So no mana back for the Sivir, but not going to be too much of an issue as the Essence Reaver will give her back anything that she would have lost. Yeah, exactly right. And Revolta takes away the blue buff, able to out-pressure Little Blanc, who's hanging out in the bottom lane. Now joins with that Herald buff. And I think that this is something that's been interesting. It's Certain teams' prioritization of Rift Herald and trying to use it to push out waves. You know, it's something that we saw a lot at IEM and then kind of fell away as teams figured out how to deal with it. Of course, they only get extra damage. They don't really get extra health. So Sivir deals with those creep waves nicely. But really, INTZ, they've just controlled. Well, oh, Revolta may have overstayed his welcome here. The pillar is going to come out, but Jocks are more than happy to block out any follow-up damage. Still now looking for the engage. Kletos may have overstayed his welcome, but Macau could be going down as well. Is going to make it out safely. LeBlanc hungry for blood. Still not going to get it as Macau finally burns his flash. Pride two stacks, four stacks now as Concussive Blows will lock him up. Knock him down. Desperate for a kill. He's going to walk away empty-handed. 8-1 in favor of INTZ. And this is just gold, right? You see they catch out the jungler on INTZ's lineup. He doesn't fall down because he's got all of that extra gold and the levels and Kledos gets ca caught out on the other side, instantly blown up just because of the level and item disparity in this game. The continuation of the team fight means that Yang is impossible to kill. He's already got a spirit visage and, and just looking dominant. What's terrifying is that not only is there the 9k gold lead, but Revolta had yet to spend that money. So that in that fight, it was just the levels that gave him such a huge advantage. We don't even know what this guy's going to get yet. Instant <laughs> Abyssal Scepter by on the back. There is no one is going to kill this Nidalee. Yeah, and as I said, more of a bruiser build. He recognizes that it's the all-in team. Combi needs to be able to go into Cougar form, launch himself in there, and be able to assassinate people out. And that's how he's been playing it so far. And now with that item, a little bit more durable to do so, especially against the LeBlanc, who would be looking to pick him up. And if he goes something like Zonya's afterwards, like it's a very like peculiar build, like not something you would usually see, but immediate power at all stages throughout the game. Yeah, and... If Honestly, Revolt has been completely dominating the map. We talked about it before. Let's talk about it again. This is what we expect from him when we see him on an aggressive jungle pick. 3-0-3 three, three is scoreline, participating in 75% of his team's kills and just absolutely everywhere that he's needed to be. Pride, though, could be in trouble here. Talker is not wanting to get too aggressive, just doesn't have the damage to kill the Gragas. Now looking to make it out to safety. Still... Nothing really wasted on either side there. EMP, Whoa, ricochet. really aggressive there. I don't know if that's what you want to do, is Revolta's coming from the side. They put themselves in a bit of a pinch. Revolta may look for the spear. They're going to block out as much as they can with a LeBlanc copy, but Newbie could be in trouble. Just slowly chasing this team down. There's on the hunt burn. Now they're hungry for blood. The pillar comes out to try to save the day, but Jockster still at the front line as Revolta is hungry for that pounce in. Spear coming out, oh. blocked by the trundle, but that's one going to go down for sure. That's two going to go down. Revolta guaranteed to get the double here as he will not take out Newbie. Yang more than happy to pick it up, though. And yet, yeah, EMP doesn't have the damage to solo out the jungler. Graves will finally take the kill, but four stacks of compulsive blows, and Yang's absolutely insane Maokai now picking up a 
third kill in that exchange. And what an absolute disaster right now for Isteris Gaming. They're 11,000 gold behind, and they just tank so many spears on the back end of that team fight. And Yubi was like, dude, I want to take the spears for you, but I think he's going to kill me. In the end, he does. He was able to leap over that wall in a delayed double. I thought it was going to come out much earlier as well, but... You know, they break the base 17 minutes in first. Inhibitor uh, and Inhibitor are going to go down respectively. And backs against the wall now for Isaris. Yep, of course that <laughs> Ezreal ultimate going to get blocked out as well. So not going to be able to get a whole lot back. They're clearly still hungry for blood. They want to find a way back in this game as they keep chasing forward. But I just don't think it's going to work out for them. Another pillar comes out. No follow-up from the team. My question is, what do Isaris Gaming need to change here? Because INTZ dominated every stage of the game. And this is... Uh, Isris is, could be Isris' second loss overall, and it's on track to be if they don't figure something out quickly. Yeah, exactly right. I think uh, most importantly is that they just need to recognize that the flank plays and the group up team fight is way too much out of INTZ right now. So there's no way that you ever group up against this team. Instead, what you do is you try and control vision in your jungle and try and prey on the tendency for Revolta to counter jungle. See if you can pick up the Nidalee. You have a LeBlanc, you have that Greg. It's great catch potential, and I think they should have gone to it a little bit earlier. Just pink ward the entrances into the jungle. As soon as he tries to contest for that, see if you can get the quick pick off because right now they're running into these team fights or even worse INTZ are just dominating the team fights and there's absolutely nothing they can do about it if they stand and deliver uh, and at this point it's not even running into a team fight it's running into a meat grinder yeah INTZ are so strong and Kledos you know uh, Zekro EMP all do decent damage but just not enough as EMP could get stunned up here trying to make it to safety will lock down Macau but Mo Revolta is once again hungry for blood Graves gonna get dropped in an instant Pride could be next don't know why he went through on that TP as Talkers picks up EMP on the back side Pride could be next to fall desperately trying to disengage with that cask but another double kill goes over to Revolta 15 to the scoreline and INTZ unstoppable well unfortunately you live you learn or in League of Legends you die you learn because <laughs> right now they've got up the super creeps 19 minutes into the game it looks like INTZ are going to look to close this one out nice and early. Yang pops that ultimate. They're going to make short work of these turrets. And honestly, INTZ, we need more of this out of the Brazilian squad because this is what we expected. Yep, ultimate going to be blocked out as well as they will close out this game. Their score now 2-2 overall with a dominating performance. We wanted to see them turn it around, and now they have a few more blows going to be traded back and forth. But the Nexus will fall, and INTZ will emerge victorious. 7-1-5 for Revolta. That is a much better performance out of the Superstars Jungler. You see them on your screen there. They're still not quite content with their performance. They will now move to 2-2 two two after a loss against the Chiefs, but a good victory against Isaris Gaming. And, you know, when I look at this Brazilian squad, I just see so much potential and the ability to use that coordinated play around the map. You saw that the transition into the top lane jungle was like how they should be playing, right? Push out both lanes, collapse very, very quickly, and pick up two quick kills. Like, that is something they should be able to execute on because they do have the strong solo laners, but it's something they haven't done throughout the rest of this tournament. And I hope that they look at this game, they realize double teleport, double flanking, just works so well in an IWC environment. And of course, this is their last game of the day for INTZ. They'll be coming back tomorrow, but... Isaris Gaming have to play another match today against another incredibly strong team in the Saigon Jokers, and... I mean, Saigon Jokers absolutely crushed their game as well. INTZ crushed this game, and Isaris have to be scared because they came in 1-1, doing better than INTZ so far. Now INTZ 2-2. They are at 1-2. They need to get a win if they want to remain in the middle of the pack. And I don't know if they're going to get the opportunity. It's looking like an uphill battle for uh, Isaris. Yeah, it certainly is. And look, this is something that we were aware of for Isaris coming into this. We always thought that it was going to be a tough tournament for the Latin American South squad. But what I will say is there's a lot that they can take from that game that will eventually make them a better team. Like the fact that they didn't necessarily ward up their jungle appropriately against the Nidalee. Because if Nidalee face checks you, especially if you have things like Gragas and LeBlanc, you should be able to blow her up and they rotate much more quickly. They traverse terrain better than any mid and uh, top lane duo. So uh, especially with Graves, there was follow-up damage there. In their bottom lane, you know, they got an early advantage, but then weren't able to capitalize on it. You know, if you get first blood on Ezreal, that should become a null lane. You should just be trading experience. Instead, they pushed up the lane too far, didn't sweep out their own brushes, get double teleported on. So there are little things in this game that it's not like the long haul for Isaris that they can immediately identify, be like, crap, we screwed that up. Let's not do it in the next game and make ourselves better. And worst comes to worst, they can just they always have the option to just ban that Nidalee out, to ban these aggressive junglers, and yep. limit the ability for a jungle to punish, uh, like Revolta did in that game, because they got the Graves. They weren't necessarily able to make a, a very large impact with that pick overall, and Revolta 
controlled the map completely, but they can either try to adapt, as you've said, they can try to learn from this, or they have the flexibility to just ban it in coming games. Well, I think the other good news is that uh, Jinky doesn't seem to prioritize these ones. I mean, he has a Kindred pick, but he also went to Elise as his first choice afterwards, so I think that that becomes less of a pressure. You only run into Revolta once during the group stages, so <laughs> thank goodness they don't—they got through that hurdle. Maybe not in the fashion they wanted, but hey, they, they, they look at the got bright through, side of <laughs> <laughs> They came out the other end, Samuel. Like, they are done. All right, they may not so, have gotten over the hurdle, but they made it past, past the, hurdle. the hurdle. They climbed yeah. under the hurdle. <laughs> Trying to run through. <laughs> They've got skid knees and stuff, but, yeah. you know, not too hurt. I mean... Uh, so what I'm trying to say is like they don't have to deal with such an aggressive jungler again. So maybe this is something where, like as I said, you live, you learn. All of a sudden, they, they have to deal with another team now in Saigon Jokers. They've got different strengths than what uh, INTZ have. But you know what? Maybe not as slow as we thought they were earlier on in this uh, yeah, tournament. Of course. And we're going to have to see how Isris is able to adapt as they will play against Saigon Jokers later in the day. But we'll have another match right after this break. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next